to can you see it yes sir but it's not uh, in the presentation okay now it's perfect okay so uh, let's get started so all of you who are participating at the course already know me, uh, those who are, are uh, just listening um, to our lectures. My name is Gabriela Imre and uh, I'm working together with Sylvia of the Lysol Imaging Core facility. So a good sample preparation, it's uh, the key, well, it's not, Okay, why is not my... Uh, so a good sample preparation is the key for getting uh, the best microscopy images. If the sample is not prepared uh, correctly, even the best microscope will not uh, produce a good image, an image that will answer your scientific question. So regardless if you are working with uh, paraffin embedded samples, frozen samples, cells, or organate, there are certain steps that need to be uh, performed correctly in order to, uh, to prepare your sample accordingly and uh, well for microscopy. So during this lecture, I will touch upon uh, of the following step in sample preparation for microscopy. Which fluorophores uh, and how should you choose the fluorophores? Sample carrier, where you should put uh, your sample, the fixation, what is out of fluorescence and how to get rid of it, and the mounting medium. So, <clears throat> uh, an, is, an important step uh, uh, um, when you are designing your imaging is, uh, experience is a choice uh, of the fluorophores. And you already heard quite a lot of it. We made we we went through these lectures before, so I will just give you basically the punch uh, the punchline, because you will have different fluorophores, many three, four, uh, sometimes even more. Uh, you will use fluorescent proteins or dyes. So the point is, you always have to match the spectra of your fluorophore or fluorescent proteins dyes with the lasers uh, and filters available uh, on your microscope so you can get the optimal excitation and emission. And with, of course, this also will lead to the fact that you will avoid uh, the bleed through, to avoid bleed through between your fluorophores. So more, if you want to learn how to uh, determine, how to uh, check if you have uh, cross excitation and bleed through in your samples, please go to, uh, go to uh, Google LCI facility and on our website, uh, you will find our bleed through video where you can check uh, and understand how to, to uh, deal with um, um, uh, cross excitation and uh, bleed through. Uh, an important step when uh, designing your uh, imaging experiment is the choice of the sample carrier. So before starting to, to, to prepare your sample, uh, think about and decide which type of, of, car uh, of uh, sample carrier will be most, most um, mm, suitable for your experiment. Because there are many types of uh, sample carriers you can choose from, from cover sleeve of different sizes and thicknesses to, to multi-well plates, uh, dishes, uh, plastic, uh, uh, glass bottom, and many more, and more even those who are very, very particularly um, created for some specific uh, application. And here I only illustrate a, a few of the multitude of uh, options av available. The manufacturers are constantly uh, designing new uh, carriers to, to um, keep up with the needs of the, the uh, research uh, and the scientific community. So take a look and see what is new out there. A new type of, uh, of carrier might make your life easier than designing your experiment and uh, uh, imaging uh, setup. So before starting uh, to work in the lab, decide and have a clear uh, scientific question and analysis strategy. Knowing what you want to measure 
and how you want to analyze it will help you to decide on which objective we'll need to use before starting prepare the sample and thus you know also which carrier it will be suitable for your experiment and we will understand a little bit of this why this think about you know you know about my objectives you heard quite a lot so you know the working distance uh, and uh, 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 how the, uh, that works and of course uh, the glass out of fluorescence versus plastic but we will talk about this also a little bit uh, more now so <clears throat> And even let's say that you decided, I want to use this uh, sample carrier. Well, it, the next things to check is to see if it were, uh, you can use it uh, with your microscope. Uh, the two types of uh, uh, microscope architectures, upright and inverted, will limit the usability of certain carriers, sample carriers. So um, for samples, uh, 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 fixed samples playing between the cover slip and, and the slide, both of our microscopes will, will work just fine. But for samples in multi well plates uh, uh, and dishes or uh, multi -cham chamber, multi chamber slides, that of course the uh, upright uh, uh, microscope will not really work. And why is that? Because then in the moment they will try to focus. Uh, uh, to find your sample, the uh, um, the objective will bump into the, in the into your sample carrier, so you will never be able to focus, and yeah, you will damage uh, your uh, objective if you actually can do anything uh, with it. So, for samples in multi well plates, multi chamber slides, and small dishes, the inverted microscope are the uh, the ones uh, to to be used. Of course, if you have uh, an upright and you insist on uh, and using, uh, um, let's say, a dish, then you will have to have a dish which is big enough to basically allow the, the objective uh, to be dipped in. And for that, you will also have to use a dip, uh, dipping objectives. For intervital imaging, upright microscopes uh, are, of course, uh, the best. So always choose a sample carrier that works with your microscope. Now, the, the next step to think about is also that we found our uh, sample carrier, but what is the, the, if, uh, uh, the, the thickness of the cover slit, for example, or the thickness of the, uh, of the bottom uh, of the multi-well uh, uh, multi -well plate or uh, chamber? So all manufacturers are, are uh, they will use the same labeling system, number 1.5, which means 170 micrometer thick uh, uh, cover slip uh, uh, with a range with plus minus uh, 10 micrometer uh, tolerance in between. Number 1.5H uh, uh, label cover slips uh, are uh, high precision cover slips, which can be used for, uh, for special uh, applications, like for example, uh, turf, super resolution, and when you are using uh, uh, objects with a very high uh, N, uh, NA. But what does it, what happens if you, for example, you use a, a cover slit with a, a, with a, a wrong thickness? For, for example, this uh, graph presenting the calculated maximum intensity of a, 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 in an image, uh, when the a bead was the uh, image, which can easily be your sample too, uh, which is versus uh, the um, deviation of the uh, the cover thick, uh, thickness for the ideal value of 170 uh, micro a micrometer as a function of the numerical aperture of the objective. And this uh, graph actually tells us that the image quality varies even with the same coercive deviation, depending on the numerical aperture of the objective. So for example, for an ob objective with a, a numerical aperture of 0 0.95, even a thickness deviation of 30 micrometer will influence uh, the, the, um, uh, the um, intensity in, within the image by, uh, by 
drop, dropping its intensity with 80%. So we, our image will be much, much uh, dimmer when we are uh, having a, a cover slip with a thick, uh, thickness that is uh, not 170 uh, micrometer. And of course, if you we are looking to a, a objective which has a numerical aperture of 0 0.5 or 4, for example, at the 10, 10x objective, uh, we can see that this has a very little uh, influence uh, on the image uh, uh, quality with the same deviation uh, of the from the uh, ideal uh, value. So, of course, the cover slips are not perfect. As I said, they have usually, they are a range between 160, 180, 90 micrometer. So to correct for the, this kind of uh, uh, compensate for such errors, uh, well-adjusted objectives are equipped with correction colors that can be utilized to adjust the spacing of their intermediate uh, elements according to the cover slip uh, thickness. So if you have this uh, correction color on your objective, please use it. You might uh, see it, it can make wonders uh, than imaging your, your sample. Now, sometimes you do have to image uh, or your cells using plastic culture multi-well plates or dishes. Um, either because uh, yeah, you don't have, you didn't buy uh, um, other type of uh, uh, multi-well plates or your boss says you can use uh, these two. But these shelter cal plates are often the bottom of them uh, is uh, usually uh, often thick around one uh, millimeter. And quite often this plastic of which these uh, cell culture plates are produced are out of fluorescence. And moreover, the bottom is not very, uh, very flat. So it will be very hard to keep the focus over large uh, areas. But if your application requires the use of these thick, thick uh, plastic bottom carriers, use long working distance or extra long working distance objectives which are designed to be used with these type of carriers. Now, you have to think also that if you use these uh, uh, plastic bottom dishes or multi-well plates, you will not be able to use any high resolution uh, uh, objective. So only use thick plastic bottom dishes well uh, plates if you are sure that you do not need high resolution imaging. But again, in case you do need high resolution, you should use multi-well plates, this is chamber, which have a thin plastic bottom polymer uh, uh, at the bottom of the, uh, uh, the dish or multi-well plate. You know, they're also labeled number 1.5, but in some cases, this number 1.5 actually doesn't really mean 170, uh, uh, 170 micrometer. Like for example, EBD do label their uh, polymer bottom carriers as number 1.5, but actually that means 180 micrometer plus 10 minus uh, five. So check please. So you know what you are dealing with. And also even these uh, polymer bottom uh, uh, carrier might display some autofluorescence, not as much and far away from the uh, classical plastic uh, uh, um, um, culture plates. But you have to keep in mind because if your signal is dim, it will drown in the, uh, in the autofluorescence uh, signal. Also check that they have the same refractive index uh, as class, which is around 1.52. There is a variation in the, uh, the refractive index between different uh, polymers. So uh, check uh, what you actually get. Now, <clears throat> uh, then, we'll, then using multi-well chambers, please uh, play, uh, um, you then you use plastic uh, polymer bottom multi-well plates, culture DCs or multi-well chambers. You have to be aware that the oil might uh, damage uh, uh, or might 
uh, might damage the bottom. Some plastics are very sensitive to the oil we are uh, uh, using uh, uh, for our uh, uh, objectives. And here you can actually see an image where the, uh, the oil uh, touched the, the bottom uh, of, uh, of our uh, pulti well plate. And basically after a while it was impossible to, uh, to image. And that will not uh, already damage your sample, but I also damage the objective uh, itself. So <clears throat> uh, many manufacturer of plastic bottom carriers check if their carriers are sensitive to the most commonly used immersion oils. So follow the recommendation to avoid unpleasant, surprising than imaging. And uh, here I just illustrate the one example from one company who did this kind of study regarding the immersion oils and their influence on their plastic bottom carriers. I am convinced that uh, other manufacturers have something similar. Uh, and if you do not find it on their, uh, their homepage, write to them and ask uh, that, uh, that you know if their, their plastic bottom carriers uh, uh, work together with the immersion oil that you are uh, using. It's very, very important. Now, then using multi-weld plates, uh, multi uh, uh, plates, there is one more thing to check before pur purchasing uh, the plates. And it is the height uh, of the skirt at the bottom of your plate. And the skirt is the plastic edge that lifts the bottom of the plate so that the, uh, the glass doesn't touch uh, the, the, uh, the table where we are putting it. But when you want to image the wells at the edge of, the, uh, of a plate with high skirt, the objective might bump into the stage insert. This is dangerous for the objective and the focus will be lost. So uh, in many cases, you will then, in order to not come to that, you will, will, be, you will have to exclude the art outer wells uh, from your uh, from the multi-well plate, uh, basically, uh, basically ending up with the 60 wells instead of 96. So we suggest not to buy, uh, not buying multi well plates with high skirt. So before buying a whole bunch uh, of uh, multi well plates, please check them the following. Again, that they have a, a number uh, 1.5, 70 micrometer thick glass uh, cover stick bottom, or if you don't have a choice, thin optical plastic or, 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 or a polymer that they have a low skirt, that they do not leak, and it's not a joke. Sometimes it can leak between wells, and it's uh, it's quite odd Then you look uh, to a sample and you know that, oh, in, in this well, I shouldn't see anything because it's my control, but you actually see, let's say, a duppy staining, and you know that it might it leaked from the well uh, uh, next, uh, they are sent to it. So sometimes it happens. So if you have, uh, do have some uh, important experiment, you, had, uh, you add different uh, chemicals to see an effect, that will not be uh, accurate at all. So we will get really wrong uh, results. Uh, that they don't kill the cells. And unfortunately, this is not a joke either. Depending on the glue they use to produce, then they are uh, gluing uh, the, the glass uh, to the bottom of these plates. Uh, it can uh, affect uh, the viability of the cells. It also happened in uh, for people uh, who are uh, at our facility. That they are flat throughout the whole surface because the whole idea of using a multi-well plate is that you want to image a lot of wells at once. So you don't want to, uh, you want to keep the focus uh, as well as possible between different uh, wells. So of course, this, uh, then you want to, uh, to be sure that they are flat and that they are not of the fluorescence. And this is, of course, valid uh, for the plastic bottom carriers. So you will ask me, how, on, how can I check all this you know, uh, uh, before uh, buying all of them? Because they are usually cost quite a lot. Well, if you call the company and you tell them to send you a, a, a sample, 
so you can uh, free sample. So then you could, you will be able to check all these uh, parameters. Okay. Now, when we are using multi-weight chambers, you should pay attention to which type of chamber you are purchasing, especially if you uh, would like to do high-end fluorescence imaging. The multi well chamber come in two main design, and uh, one type will have a removable wall, in which case the bottom of the of the chamber it's a, it's thick, almost as thick as a slide, around one millimeter, and the idea is that you are removing uh, the the um, walls, and afterwards you add mounting medium uh, and the cover slip, and you start uh, uh, you uh, start imaging. The second uh, design is the uh, the one that do not have any removable uh, walls. So <clears throat> you will you will do your uh, your imaging within uh, the uh, you will do your staining in uh, in the walls, and at the end you just leave it with PBS and you can start imaging straight away. And this setup is suitable uh, for high NAs because at the bottom. Of these uh, chambers, you have a thin plastic number one, uh, or thin glass or plastic number one point five. If you want to uh, use uh, this uh, type of of, uh, of carriers for long term storage, you can uh, add mounting medium. And of course, this is suited uh, uh, for inverted uh, microscope. You will not uh, uh, use it in uh, be able to use it in upright uh, microscopes. <clears throat> <clears throat> now I think that um, then we we talked quite uh, before also a little bit. You already um, heard uh, that uh, it's very important that the uh, gla uh, glass uh, cover slip that you use to be uh, uh, very uh, clean, and cleaning the cover slip is critical for a, a microscopy based uh, experiments. And although the cover slip look clean, especially when the new box is first open, they might have impurities or a thin film of grease on them. That will not allow, uh, allow uh, for example, um, um, tissues uh, to, uh, to adhere very well or coating like polyalysin. So that's why we always say that uh, the cover slip, they should routinely be washed uh, with acid or base solution because it will improve the uh, uh, cell uh, addition or, uh, or uh, uh, um, addition of the other coating uh, uh, reagents. Uh, in our lab uh, or in our facility, we suggest that uh, uh, you should uh, use a concentrated uh, H, uh, uh, HCl uh, sol uh, solution, which is, uh, or at least we recommend, because it's uh, not only reported to enhance the cleanness of the cover slip, but the concentrated acid, acid also etches uh, the glass, making its surface more rough and a better substrate for tissues to attach, uh, to attach uh, and the surface to be coated. So basically what you do, you take a beaker with concentrated HCl and you dump a lot of uh, cover slips, the one that you want to use in that. You leave it there for a few hours. The best is overnight, but please be very careful then working with a strong acid, okay? And then uh, the next day you are uh, removing the concentrated uh, acid. You, put it, you can reuse it, so you put it back in your uh, bottle and then you uh, uh, take a big be uh, beaker or whatever, so you have a lot of water and you add the cover slip uh, uh, there and you wash it uh, thoroughly. Uh, after uh, that, uh, you can uh, store the cover slip in sterile water till you need to use them. Uh, and again, then I say to, to wash them very uh, thoroughly is that uh, basically you try to see that you are separating them so also the acid between the cover slip uh, uh, doesn't get stuck. Uh, and of course, then you want to use them, you will sterilize uh, the cover slip by, uh, by washing them with 70% uh, ethanol. 
and of course you uh, dry them uh, before uh, uh, before use now where should we uh, put uh, our uh, sample is then and the, the next uh, important um, uh, question and to understand why is important uh, why we uh, uh, where we are putting our sample so ideally what we would like and from a microscopist point of view ideally the the sample should be put uh, on a cover slip then you add your mounting medium and you add your slide so this and afterwards you go to your microscope and you will uh, image uh, through the the um you will reach uh, the light will reach uh, the cover slip through the cover slip the sample and mounting uh, mounting uh, uh, media and from our point of view for the microscopy uh, my point of view this is the correct way to mount your sample but unfortunately this is not uh, uh, always uh, uh, not it's not uh, always possible and first of all, because it's very hard to keep the sample on the cover slip. Because if not coated, the cover slip have no charge. And we know that the, uh, the, the, the tissues are usually negatively charged. So even if it seems that they are, they are stuck to the cover slip, you know, they might, uh, after a while, and due to all the washes and uh, antigen retriever steps we are doing, it, they might glide down and uh, yeah, you lose your sample. And some type of tissues, of course, will uh, are notoriously known to be hard to 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 keep even on the uh, on the well known uh, superfrost uh, plus uh, slides. And these are the bones, cartilage, fatty tissues. They are detaching very easily, and especially if antigen retrieval is needed. That's why to keep the tissue on a cover slip is not easy. But as I already took you uh, and I uh, already mentioned, there are ways how we can improve uh, the attachment of uh, the sample uh, directly to the cover slip. That's acid cleaning, especially if you are using the harsh acid, it will uh, also make uh, etch the, uh, the, uh, the surface of the glass, making it a little bit rough and uh, breaking some uh, bonds, that will help quite a lot. Or you can uh, coat the surface with adhesive, uh, adhesives, uh, which uh, will create a positive charge on the glass surface and will allow the binding of the neg negatively charged tissues. The well-known um, adhesives are, are polyalysin, gelatin, aminosilanes, uh, fibronectin, laminin, collagen, these are for cell adherence, and so on. And another way that you could, uh, what you could do is to, to basically cut your, if you can cut your sample uh, more than 20 micrometers thick, then you do all your staining in, in a tube, no? And then you are done with your immunostaining, uh, sometimes even clearing because now you have which the uh, the tissues are quite thick afterwards you are uh, you basically put it on the cover slip uh, and uh, yeah uh, you can use the same uh, uh, mounting medium as for, for clearing you can put it between two cover slip or cover slip and the slide and this is called free floating uh, uh, um, sections and free floating uh, uh, immunostaining. So there are ways to actually mount your sample exactly as it should be, according to uh, to uh, to uh, to, our, uh, to a microscopist's point of view. Okay, so the objective uh, will uh, uh, come um, close uh, in direct contact with your sample and not go through a bunch of auto uh, mounting media. But as I mentioned, the classically this is how uh, we are uh, uh, mounting or, uh, our samples. We take the uh, super frost, uh, sli uh, super frost uh, slide, and then we are uh, uh, putting the, our uh, sample there. We add a mounting medium, 
and then we are the, uh, uh, the uh, we are adding our uh, uh, cover slip, and then we are imaging uh, through the cover slip, through the mounting media uh, medium, and uh, uh, the sample. Now. You can imagine that this will give rise, uh, uh, rise to light scattering. Also, the fact that we're adding mounting medium and each time probably we, are, we add a little bit different. Uh, and, but first of all, because we, out, uh, we add the mounting medium and the, the light will have to pass through, uh, first through the mounting medium, uh, we'll have a little bit hard, it will be quite hard to focus and the, the, the image uh, will uh, be quite uh, blurry. Now, since again, we are passing through uh, the mountain medium first, uh, uh, then also the light uh, that will reach the sample, uh, it, it's less. So the, uh, the, uh, our image will be much dimmer. And we will not be able to be, uh, the irreproducibility between the uh, uh, experiments will occur. Because again, each time you will be uh, you will add a different amount of uh, 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 mounting uh, medium. But can we minimize the light scattering? Can we do anyway something so uh, so we can uh, minimize all these uh, negative uh, the negative impact of actually uh, uh, our sample preparation? Because sometimes, as I said, it's not too much you can do about it. So in this we can minimize the light scattering. So first of all, add as little mounting medium as possible and always the same amount. Unfortunately, that's not very always very easy because what you usually do, you take uh, the, uh, the slide and you crowd it with many, many, many tissue sections and then you're squeezing out from the mounting uh, medium bottle a drop, you know, it's a drop can be 30 micrometer, it can be 40, whatever. And then you are adding uh, uh, adding the cover slip. So one day, uh, one time, as I said, you can add 30, 40, uh, 40 micrometer, uh, microliter, the next time, uh, maybe uh, even more, depending how you are squeezing. So that will give rise to irreproducibility between uh, your uh, experiments. So because the thickness of the mounting medium. So what I suggest is to have less uh, sections on the slide and then use these small, smaller uh, square uh, cover slips, which of course they are clean and they are number 1.5. And you know exactly the amount of the mounting media you, you add uh, uh, each time. You can try, I can say that for this square, like. What is it? 18 um, or 22 uh, uh, millimeter um, uh, mount uh, cover slips, the square ones, seven microliter is more than enough. And it's easy to handle, and you will all the time add uh, the same uh, amount. So the, you will, the, the reprodu reproducibility between your experiment uh, uh, will increase. And of course, because they are, um, um, now you have uh, the thickness of the mountain uh, medium, uh, it's uh, less, then you will also, more light will reach uh, the sample and it will be much easier uh, uh, to focus. And of course, you should not uh, uh, forget that to also to, uh, uh, you should match the refractive index of the mountain medium, the refractive index uh, 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 of your immersion uh, media uh, of the, for your objective. That will also, of course, uh, prevent uh, uh, light scattering. And of course, it's not very hard uh, going back to, uh, to, the, to when placing the, the tissue uh, on the cover slip. And it's, it's not very hard to, uh, to place the tissue on the um, cover slip. Um, Basically, you follow exactly the same procedure as it uh, would be placed uh, on the, the on the slide to make your slide uh, your life easier or the technician's life easier. Who's uh, doing that for you? You can prepare in advance uh, a slide uh, with a, a, a 
cover slip on top, which you can uh, tape uh, as shown in my little cartoon and you give it to her and you will be, you will see uh, then uh, then she will be able to put everything exactly as uh, she would put it on on the uh, slide and here you can you can start this movie uh, and you can see how she's uh, doing it So now, now it comes. So what she has is a thin number one point five uh, cover slip. Okay. Now in this particular video, I did not prepare for her uh the, the 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 slide and the cover slip as i show it in my my cartoon um i come up with the idea much later that i should have done that so she can handle it easier but she was very experienced so she she didn't have any problem whatsoever uh to to place it there and one what uh, uh what happens then now we are done you have uh, our uh sample on the cover slip uh, which is now taped uh, to the the uh, slide. So you do all the, uh, and the sample is facing up. Uh, you can just keep it like this, uh, do all your immunostaining steps. Uh, and afterwards, then you are done. You are gently, you, you can take a, another clean uh, slide. Uh, you add uh, uh, your mounting medium, and then you flip over uh, the, the tissue, uh, which is on the cover stick. And here it is. Now you have uh, the perfect uh, the sample. Now, if you are working with cells in suspension, uh, the same thing. Usually what we do, we take the slide uh, and then we are cytospinning the cells on the slide. Uh, then we add bounty media and the cover slip. And of course we will image again through the mounty medium um, giving right, uh, uh, rise to um, uh, scattering. So this is not the correct way to prepare the sample. So what should you do? It's exactly the same. You take a slide, you, you add the cover slip, or you know that the, the, the cells will end up uh, when you do the cytospin, uh, you just, uh, again, uh, fix it there with some uh, tape, and then you are just cytospinning the cells uh, like that. It works very nice. In the discover slip are very thin. They will not interfere with, uh, with, the, uh, with, the, uh, with the cytospin. Nothing would happen to the machine just because we had, you had this uh, thin uh, uh, cover slip. And then now, basically, we have uh, uh, the, uh, the cells are on the cover slip, and we, after we added the, the mounting medium, we don't really, it's not, uh, don't care how thick the, the, that layer is, because now we are, when we are imaging, we are imaging uh, uh, through the cover slip and we are ending up directly with, uh, with, our, uh, to, with, uh, with our cells. So this is the correct way how to spin, uh, 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 how to uh, work with the uh, cells in suspension if you want to look at them uh, with the in a microscope. Okay. Um, now, that's very nice, but a very common mistake uh, that we could I could see during these years is that uh, what happens is that when you prepare your sample and then you add the cover slip uh, and, uh, or to your slide, and what happens is that you covered the end of the slide. Uh, 
at least one end of the slide. So what happens that then you are putting the, the uh, your sample on the stage insert, you will see that it doesn't it it will rest on one side. It will rest on the slide, in the, like in the left, and on the right side it will rest on the slide plus the cover slip. This means that it won't be flat and uh, uh, won't be flat. So it's not correct. And if you look at an image which was acquired in such uh, uh, with a slide that uh, uh, just prepared in this way, we can see that uh, it's focused in the middle and very much uh, unfocused uh, on uh, uh, one, uh, one side. So please pay attention. So what you should do is that you add the cover slip in such a way that the both ends are uh, free. So when you are added on the stage insert, it will rest properly on the slide only. So now uh, uh, your sample will uh, will be flat. And this is the correct way uh, to prepare your sample. Okay, it doesn't matter that the cover slip ends up on the white part of the slide, really. It doesn't matter. Um, now, if you are working with... Uh, um, small round cover slips sometimes you want to 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 have them uh, you culture uh, you add them on a multi well plate a regular uh, cell culture multi well plate this 12 milli 12 30 millimeter fist like a charm and you will uh, uh, add your cells on top of them and yeah you can have a lot of conditions uh, but when you want to remove them um, that uh, uh, it's not always uh, uh, so easy all you need uh, for them is to have a slightly bent needle tip uh, and a tweezer. And actually, I did prepare a little movie on how I'm a video on how I'm doing it, uh, which uh, uh, you can find it on our um, YouTube uh, channel. It's uh, it's just a five minutes, or I can uh, I show you how I basically uh, do it. Uh, and after one or two covers, a, a tiny little bit of practice, you are it will go very easy. So you have a lot of cover slip you can uh, work with, uh, and it's uh, basically you have uh, you will already have the sample uh, perfectly uh, prepared. Okay. So now let's have a, a two three minutes uh, uh, five minutes break if you want, and then uh, uh, we will continue. Okay. Everybody with me. Now we talk about where we should put, I should put my sample. Let's talk ab uh, about uh, fixation. Uh, as you know, uh, so if we don't uh, image the cells live, we have to fix them. And uh, the most commonly used fixative is formaldehyde solution. But there are of course other fixative tools like methanol, acetone, glutaraldehyde, ethanol, or a combination of them. But I will, Talk a little bit of the formaldehyde because this is the one that we are uh, uh, using uh, uh, the most. And if we are using uh, F, uh, formaldehyde solution as fixative, uh, you have several uh, options. Uh, you can make it yourself from the powder when you buy, and it's called paraformaldehyde, which is a long chain of uh, formaldehyde molecules. But, uh, and what you should do is you should make a working stock solution uh, around 8%. That's what I usually do and adjust uh, the, uh, the pH correctly because it's quite acid. And if you just leave it like that, oh, I'm done, ooh, uh, then it will affect your fixation. The best is to aliquot it in falcon tubes and freeze down and only keep a small quantity in the fridge as concentrated working stock. stock but uh, not uh, more than one month. Now, you can also make it from formalin, which is a 37 to 40% concentrated uh, solution of uh, formaldehyde in water, which means that the 10% formalin solution will contain some 4% formaldehyde. But you should keep the stock, uh, uh, the stock of formalin, this concentrated one, at room temperature, well sealed and out of sunlight not just lingering around some, somewhere on the shelf in, 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 on, a, on a bench. The bottles 
uh, with, uh, of this formalin solution that are already open should not be used more than uh, than six months. So always that, don't try to buy the big ones ooh, as much because it's cheaper. Sometimes you have to also think how much I will use up, you know. And if you know that you you have a certain amount, you try buy the uh, the small one. And also be aware, and it's very very important. That most commercially for uh, commercial formalin solution might contain various concentrations of methanol to stabilize the solution. You know that always the the uh, the formaldehyde uh, tries to go back to its its long chain to the paraformaldehyde uh, state. So for that they add methanol to stabilize the solution, and in many cases it happen it might happen that your antibody might not be, uh, be compatible with it. And the third option is to buy sealed ampules, which have, can be bought at various concentrations, 8, 15, 16, 20, and they are usually methanol free. But please check. So the choice of your fixative should be determined by your application, the cell type, and the tissue you are using, and the recommendation of, of the antibody manufacturer. Okay? Now, if you are you uh, you, uh, you are fixing, uh, uh, for example, uh, uh, cells, you know, only warm up. First, an example: only warm up uh, the amount of fixative that uh, you need, you know, uh, and add it to the culture medium, volume to volume, you know, for an eight percent uh, percent stop. Then, you, if you added your medium, it will get a four percent uh, fixing solution. Uh, and you know the time for fixation can depend quite a lot in between the cell time, but it should be between I don't know eight to fifteen mi uh, minutes max, not more. Usually at uh, 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 room temperature or thirty-seven degrees. You don't want to use cold uh, uh, for uh, fixing solution or cold PBS uh, to shock the cells. You don't want that. Uh, and afterwards, uh, gentle rinse them with the uh, PBS. And in this particular image, you can see that the, the fixation didn't really work well. Um, one can see is that the cells are partially detached and they are uh, folded uh, on uh, themselves. So either the solution you, uh, that, uh, that you use was not uh, very good or you didn't uh, uh, allow enough time um, for for uh, the fixation to take back because the fixation will not uh, uh, the only links proteins together it doesn't sell, set the cells uh, in in cement and the sample is very fragile. Now, uh, the different uh, fixative will have different effects on the epitopes for antibody recognition. Uh, for example, in the, this paper uh, from thousand, uh, 2009, they look at the the, the effect of different fixative used uh, to in, in the common immunostainings, uh, and they check 72 different antibody. Uh, and here I just want to show you that uh, depending on the, the buffer you are using, you might get a, a different staining or no staining at all. So in the upper panel, they were uh, they were looking at K-type opinoid uh, receptor, and they used two different uh, um, uh, fixation buffer, the uh, neutral uh, buffer formalin and uh, zinc salt uh, bath, uh, uh, buffer. And you, uh, they only got staining uh, uh, for the K-type opinoid receptor in the uh, zinc salt uh, uh, solution, exactly as it was reported previously uh, in other publication. In the lower panel, uh, they were looking to selenoprotein S in uh, U251 cells. And again, they, are, they were using two different fixatives. Uh, and um, again, um, you, the pattern is totally different and using the neutral uh, buffer formalin or the hepas glutamic acid uh, buffer. One uh, gave rise to a cytoplasmic staining, the other to uh, the um, Cytoplasmic, uh, cytoplasmic uh, uh, staining. And it should have been uh, uh, the uh, reported from previous uh, publication, it should have been a cytoplasmic uh, staining. So be very critical 
uh, especially if you uh, you are using new an uh, new antibodies uh, later uh, when you are assessing your uh, immunostaining, please pay attention and be quick there and see, can it be? Do I get actually what I'm uh, supposed and expected uh, uh, to get, especially if you change fixative or uh, uh, and so on. Now, uh, the next uh, um, uh, I will uh, I will stop uh, and talk about is um, it's about uh, autofluorescence. And what is autofluorescence? And of course, is the major source of the fluorescence background in imaging experiments involving biological samples. And uh, basically. It can be described as background fluorescent in a sample that do not come from the antibody antigen antibody flor, uh, fluorophore interaction. So it's something that is there and is not due to the, the your uh, anti, uh, uh, antibody. Um, so where these autofluorescents come come from? And there are several uh, sources. Uh, believe it or not, it can come from the mounting medium you use and mounting your sample. Uh, it can come from the culture uh, media too. Autofluorescence can come from uh, uh, or can result from the use of aldehyde fixative as as uh, formaldehyde and glutaraldehyde. Common endogenous uh, uh, fluorophores like NIDPH, flavins, lipofuscin, porphyrins, collagen, elastin—they elastin, all, uh, they can, uh, they all show uh, uh, um, the tissues containing uh, these uh, components will show autofluorescence, um, and uh, these components most, mostly fluoresce in the uh, the green and yellow portion of the visible spectrum. Uh, and here you can see a typical spectral profile of autofluorescence emission from single uh, endogenous uh, fluorophores, um, which uh, this was actually for the spectro, uh, uh, spectro, uh, spectrophotometry uh, and from poor, but nevertheless, you can see their spectra. Uh, the excitation was a 360 uh, cc. Um, so, yeah. We have all this, uh, uh, this, uh, the, this fluorescence in our sample. So of course, it's very important that we deal with them. First of all, we know about it, and then uh, we deal uh, uh, with it. But of course, sometimes uh, autofluorescence can be useful too. Uh, and you can still extract the informa information uh, from, uh, from it. So now let's see. How we can recognize that we have or uh, we understand that we have uh, autofluorescence. So as I said, the autofluorescence uh, can come from the mounting uh, medium uh, too. Uh, and for most of them, the autofluorescence uh, in a mounting medium uh, uh, develops uh, during uh, uh, time as the mounting medium ages. Uh, mounting medium degrades in time and it will, and it gets worse uh, than the researchers are mistreating uh, the mountain uh, uh, re uh, media by regularly forgetting it at room temp temperature. Uh, then it should be on the in the fridge and with, uh, vice versa. So always store uh, your mounting medium according to the manufacturer's instruction, and you should always check your mounting medium. You should check regularly if your mounting medium is uh, 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 has autofluorescence. Um, do you think that uh, your own mounting medium uh, is not fluorescence? Well, you will never. Uh, you will uh, only uh, in reality will only see it if you actually uh, look for it. And a very simple way to do that is to basically uh, look uh, to image a bubble which means you can make an extra sample where you only put a, a mounting a me, a medium, then uh, you, uh, you focus on the edge uh, of, a, of a bubble and you take an image with all the, the channels that you are actually uh, using, okay? Then you look at your image, you increase your contrast and, uh, and the brightness in, uh, in your image. And Basically, if you see a black, uh, uh, if you see the, the black spot uh, where uh, where the bubble is, 
uh, then uh, your mounting medium is uh, uh, flores uh, fluorescent. So what you can do, yeah, well, you change the mounting medium uh, to to uh, uh, to uh, to, uh, to your uh, to a new one. Uh, because that will definitely help your imaging. It will definitely uh, help your uh, uh, signal to background uh, ratio on all your uh, images. And of course, never use mounting medium uh, containing uh, DAPI. Instead, perform uh, the DNA step, uh, staining as a step, as a step or as a step before mounting, uh, 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 before mounting your sample. Mounting medium can come from uh, your cell culture uh, media too. Um, so with imaging uh, live cells, uh, of course, you need to cover them with the culture media and most culture medias uh, contain uh, uh, components that out of flores, uh, in out of out of flores, uh, as such, they will uh, influence your uh, signal to background uh, ratio. Uh, so always try to image uh, use uh, imaging medium with no or low uh, low uh, um, concentration of flavins or vitamin B two twelve or phenol red. Here is for example you can see an, just an example of the uh, the emission uh, of the flavins uh, and they are. Uh, just an example that can be in your mounting, can be in your cell culture medium. So it's in, in the, the, the green, the green, the green uh, part of the green uh, spectra. Uh, always keep your imaging medium in the dark in the fridge uh, because several, several vital components in the culture media are sensitive to light. If you are using thin uh, polymer. Uh, uh, or plastic bottom carriers, uh, they uh, be aware that they can show autofluorescence. So you should rather use uh, number 1.5 glass cover slip because uh, the glass uh, does not fluoresce at all in the wavelength they are using in microscopy. And it's in this particular image on, on the right, you can see the intensity, the background intensity uh, uh, when uh, the cells are in uh, um, cultural media or uh, they are in the PBS. So you can imagine if you are, your signal is dim, uh, then uh, <clears throat> uh, it will drown in the, uh, the out of fluorescence uh, uh, of your uh, cultural media. Uh, as I mentioned before, most uh, the aldehydes induce uh, uh, fluorescence, and this is due to the reaction of the aldehyde with the tissue cell components, uh, and that's the for the, they give rise to the crosslink adducts. Uh, the um, glutaraldehyde is the worst; it will give the will be quite a lot of uh, autofluorescence, and on top of that, a bifunctional aldehyde. So you should try to avoid and or to minimize as much as possible the aldehyde uh, uh, produced out of fluorescence. And number one, if you really, if you don't have it, you don't need it, please don't, you, you should avoid to use a glutaraldehyde. Uh, glutaraldehyde. Uh, always fix for the minimum amount of time required for, of course, uh, requir uh, required for the size of the uh, type of the sample. Uh, do not use solutions that are old or, or stored in warm condition or in contact with uh, the air. Uh, the air. So always see that your bottle is uh, closed properly. Wash uh, thoroughly after fixation and use regions to reduce the autofluorescence in your sample. Now, the Another source, as I said, uh, of the autofluorescence can come from the sample um, sample itself. Uh, quite often the, the tissues uh, uh, are flor uh, autofluorescing uh, in many channels and you can get the uh, uh, signals which are as nice, uh, uh, strong and nice as any, an an any antibody staining. Uh, and in this panel you can just see, uh, you can see images for, which were acquired on different uh, uh, tissues. Um, and um, these are basically unstained uh, tissues. 
and you can see clear signal uh, in this particular uh, case coming uh, from lipofuscin, which is the most uh, common molecule to give out of fluorescence. And you can see it is almost everywhere. So always when working with a new, a new tissue, start with imaging unstained tissues to understand in which channel the autofluorescence is a problem. Choosing an antibody labeled in another channel actually might solve the problem. So you will not get uh, your signal in the same uh, place where, uh, uh, for example, the lipofuscin molecules are, um, uh, are present. So how can you re reduce the un unwanted autofluorescence? Well, we can use chemical treatments, and there is a, a long list of chemicals that you could use. The, um, the mostly uh, used uh, are uh, Sudan Black, uh, Truview Peroxide, Copper Sulfate, uh, Sodium Borohydrate, uh, Ammoniac, uh, uh, Ethanol, and uh, many more. There, the literature is full uh, of, of uh, protocols and uh, clever solution on how you can uh, get rid of the autofluorescence. But of course, you also have to be aware that many chemical treatment may affect the, uh, the immunofluorescent labeling. Some treatments will work better in one type of tissue, but less in the other. And uh, sometimes you might require a compromise between autofluorescent reduction and antigen visualization. But if they are also commercially available um, uh, autofluorescent redu reduction uh, agents, like for example, Sudan Black and True uh, View, and they are they are working uh, at least to my experience with our uh, our user quite nicely to reduce the autofluorescence. Another way uh, uh, you could reduce the autofluorescence, for example. Uh, it's a non-chemical treatment uh, uh, as UV irradiation, but it takes time, of course, depending on the UV uh, uh, light source. And uh, it should be uh, uh, used before you start your, your uh, immunostaining. Luckily, it can, be, and it can also be used in combination with other, uh, other treatments. Uh, Another option is to use a spectral detector to separate the autofluorescence spectrum from the spectrum of the fluorophores used to stain uh, the tissue. But check the literature. You do not have to uh, uh, reinvent uh, the, uh, the wheel. You will find a protocol probably with somebody already tried and published, and it works uh, for the particular uh, tissue type that uh, you are uh, working, uh, working with. Uh, always perform tissue controls, no primary or secondary, to reveal the level of the autofluorescence in, uh, in your tissue. So here it's an example when uh, uh, Sudan Black was uh, uh, applied on, on a section. And you can see that it, depending on the concentration uh, of the Sudan Black uh, to uh, uh, to titrate tit tit the concentration till you finally uh, uh, found the correct concentration that worked for this particular uh, uh, tissue. Here is another example where in the same tissues, uh, uh, like for example, in the human, Sudan block works as a charm, but the capra sulfate uh, 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 does not work to remove the, uh, out of the autofluorescence. Uh, in, the, in the rat tissue, uh, both work uh, quite uh, well. So please adapt uh, and uh, choose a, a reagent that works for your uh, tissue uh, type of tissue. Now, <clears throat> let's talk about uh, the, the last uh, uh, um, point I will touch upon is the mounting medium. So why do we use the, uh, we are using the mounting medium? Well, to protect the sample from trying out uh, to pretend, uh, prevent the samples from, uh, from uh, moving, especially if we are using a high NA objective, we will have our uh, immersion media and we have we will touch the, the, the cover, the surface of the cover sleeve, so and then we will move here and there, the sample will move with, uh, and that's not a good thing. Uh, we want to homogenize the refracted index for microscopy, so we are reducing light scattering uh, to increase the um, 
uh, flora for photo photo stability, and uh, of course to preserve the samples for uh, long term storage. And here we will see which uh, bounty medium works the best. So, what are the different type of bounty medium? We have water based, uh, hydrophilic, and we have organic and solvent based. Uh, hydrophobic or resin-based uh, uh, mounting uh, medium. And within the uh, water-based, we have, again, two times. We have non-hardening and hardening uh, mounting medium. And it's very important that actually you realize then you buy uh, uh, what, uh, what kind of mounting medium actually you are uh, using. Uh, the non-hardening mounting media will remain all the time liquid, liquid, which means that you will uh, you need to seal uh, uh, um, the the around the cover slip, so uh, the sample the mounting will not get out and the sample will not move. Um, the refractive index indices are between one point forty two one fifty two, and again it should be mentioned when you buy it. It should be mentioned in the data sheet. The good thing is that you will not shrink your sample. Um, after you do your imaging, the cover stick can be removed. So you can uh, uh, do another round uh, of staining, uh, but you cannot preserve your samples for a very long time. And we have the hardening mounting medias will solidify. So it's no sealing needed. So please don't do that because the whole point is for them to harden it so, so the water will, will uh, uh, evaporate during the time and it will get uh, uh, so, uh, solid. Usually you need some time to do uh, till they would reach the final, uh, their final refractive index which is they are it is specified for. So usually a few hours, it's not enough. So think thoroughly, prepare your, uh, your sample in the afternoon and start imaging the only the next day. Then you can be sure uh, that you, uh, they will uh, reach the refractive index that uh, they should uh, have. And it's usually between 1.47 to 1.52. Be aware that uh, the samples might shrink. Uh, if you use um, um, the hardening mounting medium, but you can preserve them for a long time, and your samples. Then we have the organic uh, solvent. They are, uh, they are hardening. They will harden. Uh, no, again, no sealing needed. It takes much, much more longer time to solidify. And uh, you need uh, 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 a lot of the dehydration, uh, hydration steps before you can actually apply this uh, hardening, uh, this uh, mounting medium. Uh, the samples will heavily shrink, and but they are very good for long sample preservation. So what, uh, which mountain medium should I choose? Well, that depends quite a lot uh, of the uh, sample type. Uh, we have uh, what you have tissue cells and within the tissues, what uh, uh, type of tissue, they are fatty tissues or uh, cartilage or bone tissues. If you um, are performing immunohistochemistry or immunofluorescence, uh, uh, they, uh, they nowadays, and maybe even before, but I, you can find mounting medium that are adapted specifically for immunohistochemistry or uh, uh, for uh, immunofluorescence. And again, you should choose a hardening uh, uh, mounting medium if drying and shrinking of the sample is not an issue. Uh, and that uh, uh, the refractive index of the sample and the objective medium are uh, the same, for example, around 1.5. Uh, for example, fatty tissues image with an oil objective. And you know that you want to preserve this sample for a long time. You should use a non-hardening mounting medium if you want to be able to you, you know that uh, I want to do another set of staining and I need to remove the cover slip then uh, you should use a non-hardening. And you know that you will need to measure distances in 3D because uh, you don't want the samples to shrink. So you should use a non-hardening. Um, of course, everybody wants, but at the end, it's not so very important that your sample is preserved for a very, very uh, long time. 
if you have a, a, a thicker sample, uh, for example, tissues which are maybe 30 to 40 micrometer thick, uh, you can find actually special mounting mediums that are uh, with optical clearing uh, properties, for example, slow fade glass. And if you, you mount your sample there and you, le you leave it for a few hours or overnight, actually uh, your sample would, uh, will uh, also be cleared. And we know that after a certain thickness, uh, you, you should do that anyway, so to, to minimize light scattering. And again, remember, no up in your mounting medium. So then you are mounting your sample, you should pay attention that uh, after staining you meet all the PBS to avoid diluting the mounting medium. If you are using a hardening mounting medium, allow it to fully harden on a flat surface before imaging. So the air, uh, refractive index before curing and after curing, curing or hardening are different if it's a hardening. Um, if you use a non-hardening, you should completely seal the cover slip, uh, seal the cover slip completely and allow the, uh, the dial polish to dry properly before imaging. Uh, how you can remove a mounted cover slip, it's very simple. You just uh, remove uh, the first, you care, uh, carefully remove your nail polish with a sharp blade. Then you place your, your mount, uh, mounted slide in PBS, uh, but room temperatures for some 30 minutes. And then you, around uh, after 30 minutes, actually, you can see that the cover slip detached and you just wash it with some more PBS and you can start uh, your next round of staining. Before you go to a microscope, check that the, uh, the cover slip is clean. Sometimes you will, uh, uh, you, you will see some white spots, which are a PBS salts that uh, remain there after through all the washes uh, that you perform. So please uh, remove it with a drop of, uh, of water. So uh, it won't uh, uh, affect your uh, imaging and yeah, especially if you are, uh, yeah, you don't affect the, the imaging. And if you use oil, please take care of, uh, of the, uh, remove the oil from your cover strip at the end of your uh, imaging um, uh, session. Uh, so here are the most important points when preparing samples for microscopy, match the flora for them with the microscope specifications, choose a sample carrier adapted to your experiment, use cover slip of thickness as are specified as 1.5, then ever possible, put the sample on the cover slip, the cover slip, not on the slide. Do not cover the slide and with the, uh, the cover slip uh, because otherwise you, uh, your sample will not be flat on the uh, uh, microscope stage. Always use fresh fixative solution then fixing your sample. Remove autofluorescence from your sample. Assess the autofluorescence in your tissue by imaging an unstained uh, sample. Check regularly the autofluorescence of your mounting medium. Allow mounting medium to completely harden so you get the correct refractive index. And if you are using a non-hardening mounting medium, use nail polish to completely seal the cover state. Thank you for your attention. <laughs>